Oh, I'm 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 delicious, Sam. You know what happened to Pig Boy Lucas? It's, is it just a perpetual wank job when the amazing thing we call life throws the horny switch? Who of my friends is thinking about how toned and firm my butt is? They, they liked uh, the gay stuff. Yeah, I got PS drunk. And when I say PS drunk, like he pissed himself. Everyone should just commit felonies. It's okay. I do like homoerotic things. There was some sexual tension there, and it was weird. All right, welcome to the last three brain cells. My name is Lucas, your little pig boy here, baking you up some fresh content. Really? You're, you're deciding to stick with pig boy? Well, when you make a bad joke, there's one of two choices. You can either let it die and hope everyone forgets about it, or you can just double down. Like make it the core of your identity? I I didn't say that, but we'll we'll see how successful it is. I believe that the the difference between a bad joke and a quality running gag is just commitment. It's like relationships. I, I thought you were gonna say something after commitment, but I guess not. But hey, if you're gonna double down on this pig boy stuff, man, that might almost make me consider going vegan. But that's just me. Oh, I'm 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 delicious, Sammy. All zero Yelp reviews. Uh, I'm already. right there with you. I think I just went vegetarian right now. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Broccoli is well, great. Pigs are not vegetarians. They're actually brutal. I think they're Omnivores. omnivores. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 See, we're on the same page. I mean, in we're on Gone page. with the Wind, the reason they were so panicked when Dorothy run like fell into the pig pen is because pigs will just devour everything. <laughs> We are less than five minutes in, and we have already gone from pigs to gone with the wind. I'm impressed at this turnaround time. I, I mean, the next logical step is Lord of the Flies. Ooh. And there is a pig boy in that as well. We were talking there about... Pig, you know what happened to pig boy? You know what happened to pig boy, Lucas? I, you know what happened to pig he boy. He rocked. He rocked that shit. Oh, oh wow. Wow. That was crap. Okay, so we got Pig Welcome Boy over here. Crowd. I am. Oh yeah, I'm with Please. other people. Apparently, my name is Jeremiah. Please. I'm along for the ride, like every week. And who do we got on the other end of the table here? Oh, my name's Sammy. I exist as a figment of whoever imagined this reality up. And you are definitely not a Pig Boy. Who's? I am definitely not a Pig Boy. Who's the philosopher that said, "I think, therefore I am"? Uh, not Billy Eilish. Don't you? I'm Dare. having trouble remembering. Is oh, it Kant God. or is it Thoreau? Or is it, it was, either of those? I think it was I like want, I want to say Kant. Kant or... Oh, Descartes. 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 Because it, it was the guy who that quote comes from. He wanted to start out with the idea that what if everything was just all some work of some all powerful demon who was just deceiving you by everything? And is there a way that you can work back from something that you know absolutely is true in order to disprove that possibility? And so the starting point that he came up with is I'm thinking, which means I must exist. And then he took some serious logical leaps to get through the rest. Wow. You learn something new every day. Interesting. I took a philosophy mm -hmm. class. I read Plato's Cave. And in the Dungeons and Dragons world, beholders dream the world. No, Plato's Cave is the only thing you really need to know about uh, about philosophy. So, really, Plato's Cave that's that's like it. You can yep. survive. Plato's Allegory of the Cave. Yep, that that's all you need to know about philosophy. So there has been no progression, right. no evolution of thought since then. Oh, there's been a lot, but you just don't need to care about anything else. It's, is it just a perpetual wank job? What about Freud? <gasps> yes. Have I ever told you guys about Freud and the eels? Uh, I think you told us about this at dinner last week, but I don't think Sammy's heard about this. And this is genuinely good. Let me Freud and the eels. Let me okay. throw in a, a real quick point about Freud. This is just a little tidbit that has nothing to do with eels. Just something I find in fascinating. Linguistically, Freud has only been translated into like four languages: English, French, German, and Japanese, of all things. And uh Freud, it's really hard to translate him into certain Eastern European languages or Western European languages. Uh, Eastern. Eastern because there is a phrase in a grammatical structure where something that distinguishes between something being true and something being fictional. 
And because of the way Freud wrote, it's hard to know what is an allegory fictional and what is like straight up truth. So most languages around the world have just thrown up their hands and say, yeah, we're not even going to bother. So linguistically, they were not prepared for anything remotely close to sarcasm. I, I, I think Jeremiah is just saying that their language is clearly inferior because it wasn't able to portray the complex and brilliant findings of Sigmund Freud. Yeah, Sigmund Freud, like <laughs> I said. He, he never had a bad idea. He stared into oh. the abyss and the abyss stared back. Okay, I think with that setup and knowing, think- knowing that craziness about Sigmund Freud... We're ready to learn about the, the story, man. And their genitalia. I learned about metaphors in like third grade. Wait, what? Okay, so <laughs> That Sammy, wasn't a metaphor. It was No, that's literal what this is about. Did you know? Oh, okay, wait. One of the problems in science throughout history that they were constantly... We don't know how stri- reproduce. Yeah, where are their genitalia? There, it, this was it's a problem way back in like Roman greek times so it was it's actually we're going back a little bit before plato i want to say aristotle i think it was aristotle it it was one of those i don't remember which one but he was struggling with it and his solution is clearly eels must just be what happens when water and mud mixes under the right conditions and eels spring up and that was the accepted scientific explanation for a long time okay but isn't it also a thing where we've never really observed eels reproducing? Ever? Oh, it's it, it's coming. It's coming. Uh, pun sort of intended. Anyway, yeah. so... Oh, wow. I'm just going to skip ahead. How's that a good pun when we don't know if they have genitalia? That's the point. It's, I wasn't sure if it was a good pun or not. It's yet to be observed. Oh, there was... We were uncertain whether there was truth or fiction in his statement. There's a lot of uncertainty there. Uh, But skipping to Freud, uh, before he did all his crazy stuff, uh, he was obsessed with a different kind of genitalia. No one had been able to find ill genitalia before, and he was determined to be the first. So while he was still in uh, medical school, he took several weeks, and he spent those all those weeks dissecting eels, Desperately trying to find genitalia, he practically went mad by the end of this. He was, he sent crazy letters to other people, venting his frustration with being unable to find eel genitalia. I think it's possible that the eels are what really broke him and what got him onto genitalia, that and the cocaine, probably led to all of his stuff. I don't know about the cocaine. Yeah. And the thing that's crazy about eels is what scientists later discovered is that all these different eels that they assumed were different species were actually all part of the eel life cycle. And one of the reasons why he was never going to find eel genitalia is the eels that he was dissecting was, I think it was relatively yeah, early on. Puberty yet. Yeah. But it's still crazy because, so, there's one area in the ocean. That's where all eels seemingly come from. It's a really weird ocean. It's the only ocean that's bordered on all sides by water. And it kind of forms this slow whirlpool where the waters around the edges kind of circle around. Now, we know these are where eels come from. However, in order to go from where freshwater eels would need to go to, like, lay eggs which we think they grow genitalia when the time is right when the mood strikes if you will go to this place reproduce and then leave the problem is Marvin Gaye and get it on we've never seen that happen i don't think we've even found an eel with genitalia and we've never observed what would have to be thousands of miles of you know distance we've never observed these eels making these giant treks or swims to where they would need to go in order for it to make sense. Have we tried just putting eels in tanks and, you know, setting the mood? They don't reproduce. Some mood lighting, some music. Are you suggesting that we just put some eels in a tank, throw on, like, dim the lights, and throw on some berry white? That that would probably yeah, work for you me. Know, 
might also have to deal with like the temperature and the pH of the water, but I feel like with enough simulation, we could probably figure out the conditions it takes for the eels to, you know, develop genitalia, reproduce, and then at, after which point their pro their body probably says, "Hey, we're gonna not have genitalia anymore to save energy." Um, because like you know, I feel like the I've been thinking about this the other day about how the fact that we as a species have evolved to this point is genuinely mind boggling when you consider how much we as men can't get done when the amazing thing we call life throws the horny switch and our brains just shut down for the sake of trying to reproduce. So the fact that we got here with the amount of, you know, leaps and distances we've gotten in between that's those switches being flipped and us being able to think of no other thing, I think already is a testament to human evolution. And the fact that this man, this man Freud said, hey, I'm losing my mind because I can't figure out where this eel's balls are at. And then you just find out that he's been killing either baby or prepubescent eels. Like the fact that he, this man was, this man was killing, he was basically killing children. He's killing children of another species, just wondering where their balls were. But they look imagine, weird. Imagine aliens. Imagine aliens coming up to our, like, you know, our planet or after human beings have long been extinct and they're like, man, where are their balls? Where, where, where's their skin? I can't find it. Right. And they, it's, it's balls, balls. The secret to the universe is balls. And I, I bet you the eels like probably have some microscopic um, mutual slash parasitic species that they use to simulate gen uh, the the effects and the the role of genitalia, which is something that we have observed in the wild before amongst other species of fish, where they just have another species attached to them, basically play the role of genitalia for whatever mutual or parasitic benefit. It, it happens, and then, you know, the eels might look at it and be like, ah, get off of me. I, I can't focus. Sadly, you to throw out a lot of crazy stuff. I feel like Jeremiah and I need a chance to respond look, to some of that. I just, after, oh, please after go ahead. all of that, my hope, my dream, is that in our lifetime, we actually get to see why and how eels reproduce. And Sammy can go, I knew it. I called it a hundred years ago. We can say, well, you also said like 3,000, uh, you put forward 3,000 theories. So one of them had to be right. Yeah. Now, I was thinking when you were talking earlier, Sammy, because you, you got on talking about how basically sex drive how much that messes up our potential as a species and the thing that's kind of crazy yeah. is earlier today i was thinking about asexuals and i was considering the fact that you would imagine that asexuals are probably like the scariest people because they're not inhibited oh. by any of that like you cannot control an asexual what are you going to you know sway them with chocolate i they Oh, chocolate's a good cheese. Yeah, but like we're so much That's easier to concept. manipulate. I don't know. Look, I mean, I, as much as I think of the horny switch being thrown on and somebody cannot get a task that is not very specific done, it seems that people with high functioning sex drives, like they are the ones who tend to get the most done. I mean, legendary president JFK. There's thousands of stories of him hooking up, and that was after one term in the in the White House. The White House wasn't white before his presidency. Oh Lord, get out of here! Oh no, it's been Lord it's had been nothing to do with time. this. It it was sun bleached. That was not the remodeling that Mrs. Clinton was looking forward to doing. In the anyways, but I think there's an well on one side. I think Lucas to address your point. Um, I feel like anybody who has a so solid amount of like purpose and control within themselves is like they're they're pretty hard to bribe. You know, you can you can bribe people with a lot of things outside of the horny switch. Um, that being said, I think you also raise a good point in that like there there comes a point where you know I feel like some of these people their high functioning sex drive allows them to focus in on what they need to do. Because it's just an obstacle in their in 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 their I can't talk think of worse day. It's an obstacle in their journey towards sex. Are you suffering? And from once the you have this, I know Jeremiah is here, and I I understand. 
I mean, with that hair, you know, just you just look too look too long, and you might start having having some problems focusing on uh, whatever it is you're trying. To this makes on. me think of that meme that's like if. If he's not, if he doesn't act gay with the homies, that motherfucker might actually be gay. Hmm. You hmm. know, you know, it's crazy that I've never thought about that. these sorts of things before in my world, in Jeremiah world. It's, it's not a crossed thought. Like if somebody says they're gay, I'm like, okay. And I've moved on with my day. <laughs> I don't wonder about my friends. I'm not like, ooh. Who of my friends is thinking about how toned and firm my buttocks are? I I wasn't until you said that. Right. I just I just expect like every other guy for someone to slap my butt uh, as I'm going onto the field and say, "Go get him, champ." Well, you were an ac- did they do that in acrobats? No the the acrobatic community they did that in the little league baseball yeah though. it's it's very different and now i can't look at my coach hey i was a little league champ actually i will tell baseball. you that all of the acrobats i knew when somebody was working on some something they're very supportive of attaining a new skill and then notice when somebody's body like oh man you've been working on it for the last month holy crap your delts are looking really good or wow your, your back is like real it was very open complimentary um I know that a lot of women I worked with ran into the same issue and that women's clothing is not made for athletes. So they'd like, they'd rip out of their shoulders. They wouldn't fit in their shoulders specifically. So they had to start Mm. looking for specialized clothing or clothing that would be open on top. It sounds like with everyone complimenting, however, that that was like a fairly like healthy, relatively environment. But, like, now you have me thinking about all the Little League coaches who are smacking these little kids on the ass saying, get out there, good job. And I'm just like, now I'm wondering, were they, like, in their heads thinking about the differences and suppleness of these kids' butts? Because now that's kind of, that's a disturbing thought I just had. I, I most certainly hope not. I mean, the coach for my Little League baseball was my dad, and I'm pretty sure he never slapped her butts. Well, not the kid. We We got spanked as kids, but... Uh, that's a different. I don't think he he liked doing that. That's that's different. Spanking yeah. and slapping are very very different. It's two different contexts. Yeah, three. Uh, if you compare I, I feel like... child versus adult, well, pff, what? there should be no blurring I between know. the two. So I I it's like I I really don't care a whole lot about certain things, but like part of me feels like coaches should not be slapping the asses of kids like fucking turnstiles to the subway um as they head off to the field to play a sport that their parents paid for them to do but hey that's that's just me i guess i never played a sport as a child i don't remember if we got into when i started doing all of my athletic career which was much later than most people but i cannot recall getting slapped on the butt even running cross country and doing track in high school middle school (laughs) i don't remember anyone slapping my my cheeks who was not a fellow athlete who is not a peer. Yeah, yeah. I think it happened occasionally I when I wrestled. Because I, I wrestled until high school. I, I, I stopped in high school because it wasn't my thing. Yeah, I think one of my track coaches did that very, very rarely. Um, Kind of just like, kick it in the high gear type of pass. It was like, all right, whatever. But like, outside of like Little League Baseball, I don't think I really saw that. Even when I played soccer in like middle school and stuff. Other... other sports like it was usually the other the other peers the other athletes the other students and everything isn't that funny that it's such a big thing for sports media or at least the portrayal of fictionalized sports media the coach slapping the athletes on the butt like go get them champ Mm -hmm. do you think that that stems from just uh deep learned uh roman like spartans uh strictly speaking spartans and romans are very different okay yeah sure but i mean the uh, the spartans specifically the the camaraderie both of them they very much they they liked uh the the gay stuff contextually for their cultures they thought uh homosexual sex was pure uh, kind of. I think that's a mis- I think that's a misrepresentation. Probably in a. That's more- what Wikipedia told me. <laughs> I think it's a misrepresentation yep. in a positive light because the 
relationship that they venerated was actually like a young man or somebody who was before manhood and an older man. And you were expected to take one of the roles, like a catching role when you were younger and a pitching role when you were older. But if you continued to enjoy that as you got into your older life, they would use Roman slurs uh, about you. That was not a positive thing to continue to like the playing of catch into your older older age. I mean, it was also a different times in terms of how society worked and how relationships were viewed. Like, you know, the, the average American, when we think of love, we kind of think of one or two versions. Um, one being more like romantic and one being more lustful. But like back then, you know, they had seven different versions of what they, seven different versions that they called love, you know. One was fraternal love, just like, oh, I love you, bro. Thank you, bro. Like they had like romantic love. They also had like, oh, I just, I just like having you around. Like you're cool. And they also had like, no, I, I want to like, like paternal, maternal love. Like, oh, you are my child and I want to take care of you. So like, I think part of it does come from like a different cultural context. Um, that would be a uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't be fair to like judge it with our current eyes, right? I I just want to make it very clear though that it wasn't like a hey bro, this is our purest form of love. Like maybe some parts I don't know, I don't know. There's there's a darker tinge to that. That was also like hey, that was how you're supposed to network too. Hmm. I I remember reading interesting way to network. Uh, I remember reading on Wikipedia something. I think it was a, a sparring king was made fun of because apparently there was a beautiful boy and he he wouldn't kiss the boy. And they're like, it's yes. like the opposite. Of, what are you well, gay? That it's was like, what are you straight? There was there there was a practice in Greece where when you had a party, of course you have your. Uh, host who's mixing the wine so some parties are very popular because it's a paste the wine is a fermented paste and you mix it with water and then you would have the beautiful boy part where everyone tried to bring the most beautiful boy and everyone would take turns kissing the boys to see who was most beautiful greek and roman is a little different i am working my way through the mythology written by stephen fry Right now, and he will occasionally just mention, oh, yeah, here is Heracles's uh, young boy who he he just loves it. Like all he needs to do to propel the Argo forward is drink, eat and have his boy assistant wipe his brow. His boy toy. I, strictly speaking, yes. Power of boners. Knows no bounds. I feel like I could have been the most beautiful boy if I was back in those times. I feel like you have a good shot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, I you mean, nice ta- like that. Aww. well, talking about uh, gay individuals, most of the compliments I've gotten are from gay men, not women. So I guess you could say I feel more beautiful around gay men than women. So very topical. Last week, or was well, it the week before, the uh, at the time of recording, the basketball championship has just wrapped up, mm-hmm. and you were in Lawrence, Kansas, and mm-hmm. I remember we wrapped up everything for the night for our, our typical meetings for this podcast, and we start getting texts talking about the very drunk man who's convinced he knew you, talked about uh, somebody's brother, and how pretty you were. All that was true. So I was coming back, there was crazy traffic as I live relatively close to campus. Uh, And so I was pulling in to park behind my apartment and there's almost no parking. So I was going down, driving the long way, and I see this blonde college kid just clearly not having a good time i think at that point he was like face down like on his knees like face into the gravel down ass up. he was on the phone having a very emotional conversation with someone uh he came up to my car and like begged me for money for an uber like saying he would pay me back I was like, uh, I'm going to go park and then we can figure out what's going on with you. And so I ended up having to circle back around and I parked. And then at first I couldn't find him because he had like moved location a little bit. (laughs) 
Uh, but I found him. I was like, okay, you're clearly very drunk. My apartment's nearby. Why don't you just sit outside my apartment, wait for someone to come pick you up, and I can get you some water, and you can just sip some water while you wait. And so that's what we did. On the way back, he, he said, hey, can you hold my hand? And he's like, I'm very drunk. And so I was like, sure. And pretty sure he just wanted to hold my hand. But, and then... I'm we- glad he could vocalize it, because I often find that I cannot vocalize that. I'm not entirely, like, very drunk, or... Anyway, I'm... About holding your hand. Oh. You can hold my hand whenever you want, Jeremiah. You've just never asked. No, but in all seriousness. uh, So we get back. I get him sat down. I get him some water. I've been on and off off his phone talking to his friend who's coming to pick him up. She's, you know, a ways out. And... I'm just babysitting the super drunk guy. He has like nail polish on his fingers. Um, he's he's very obviously a drunk gay college kid. And he, I mean, he was a nice enough guy, but drunk people are hard to control. Um, he, he kept telling me he loved me because I was just the nicest person. He called me Angel multiple times because I was helping him out. I like Angel better than Pig Boy. Just going to put it out there. I also like Angel better than Pig Boy. When pigs fly. And... (laughs) Got him. So, he... And he's doing all these things, and then he takes out his phone, and he starts Snapchatting people. Also, he mistakes me for someone else. Like, someone he knew brother. Someone who worked at a restaurant that he worked at as or I think he's still working at, as a surfer. And he went on an emotional spiel about how I deserve better. Because apparently who he thought I was got fired or demoted to just a surver. He's like, you deserve so much that better. That's why I said I loved you so quickly. Well, uh, yes and no. Um, to the point where he started Snapchatting and he started Snapchatting this guy saying, hey, I'm with your brother, Snapchatting with me in the Snapchat, just kind of looking at him. He's like, your brother said not to do this and just wait till the morning, but I decide to do it now. Hey, I'm with your brother. He's an angel. He deserves the best. Super drunk uh, the whole time. Um, I and all that stuff. And then he like posted a Snapchat. I was like, this is going to be a fun story tomorrow when he wakes up, sees the Snapchat, his friends like, I don't know who the fuck that was. <laughs> but it wasn't my brother. That's what it was. But eventually his friend comes, picks him up. She was hot. That's not relevant to the story, but I thought I mentioned it. I think it's relevant to the entire conversation here today. I, I agree, yes. Well, regardless, uh, when he sees her pulled up uh, around the corner, he goes running off. I should have predicted it. I didn't grab him in time. He ran out in the middle of the street. Luckily, did not get hit by a car. Oh, thank goodness. Had to yell him back to the vehicle and get him in. And then he, like, hugged me through the window. I I can't remember. I think he tried to kiss me on the cheek. I don't know. I I don't really remember. Here's my follow-ups. He what told a, me I was cute. What a statement. You were lucky that as drunk as this individual sounded, they were not pulling their clothes off naked because drunk people try to get naked all the time. I don't know what it is. They always are trying to get naked. Something about the alcohol. It just makes you really hot. And next thing you know, you just you just got to take it off. Right. It's if he would here, start doing that stuff, I would just left clothes. him. Well, I mean, he's I would not have left him to... fin for himself at that point. I was always kind of like, okay, buddy, let's, let's well, like. He's not trying, I'm not trying to say he's trying to hook up with you. There are many people who uh, get drunk and they get naked, especially if it's, <laughs> especially if it's tequila. Tequila is colloquially known as clothing repellent. Oh. Hmm. Well, you know, there you go. You have your stripper drunks, you have your horny drunks, you have your sad drunks, you have your naked drunks, your solo drunks. Yeah. yeah. Well, people apparently he is supposed to go out drinking with his friends after the game which is when this was but he pre-gamed yeah. really hard and his friends just left him Damn. fair to go out because he was too drunk and it's like what kind of friends do you have that none of them were like let's get you home and then go drink here's my follow here's my second follow well, now oh go ahead sammy go ahead go for it 
I was going to say that, uh, you know, maybe if the friends are used to this type of behavior, that's probably why they're like, yeah, we're just going to leave them at home. Because, you know, I one of the weddings I went to recently, some some guy got pissed drunk. And when I say pissed drunk, like he pissed himself. So, you know, that's Ooh. situations like that is when you're like, yeah, probably just would have rather, you know, left him at home so that he doesn't embarrass himself in front of other people and stuff like that. that uh, no, that but they a... wouldn't even like help him back to his home. I because he if, was, I uh, think he was at the game. If maybe? I had left I my friend who was already too drunk, and I'm saying you are too drunk, you need to remain in your house, and you go out anyway, and then you start calling me saying I didn't listen to you, and now I'm out, and I need you to bring me home. Well, in my heart, I would probably go find them, but I would be like, oh, I told you this would happen. Jeez. Yeah. Based on Especially if they're in college and they're talking to a hot girl and they want to talk to the hot girl instead of save the friend. Yeah, some people make different choices. Well, base I mean, again, he's drunk, so not a reliable narrator. But I got the impression that he met up with his friends, but they left him because he was too drunk. Well in which case they just left him where he was, and no one in that group took on the responsibility of getting your drunk friend back home. Well, here's our moral of. message of the day. Get your drunk friends home, even if you have to call them an Uber, Get and then it's the Uber's home. problem. And in general, Get your drunk friends home. Don't drink more than like one or two beers unless you're with people that you trust to take care of you if you mess up and end up drinking more than you should. That's sound life advice. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we're ready to move on to my second statement They don't here. sound like good friends. Which is, yeah. Lucas, Yep. you would be the smoothest guy I know if you had said to this hot girl who picked him up, hey, I, I met him out here, want to make sure he gets home drunk. Can I get your phone number so that, like, can you text me? Here's my phone number. So when he's home safe, you can let me know. It would, it would bring me a lot of peace of mind. I thought about it. Oh, bro, but you got I execute. didn't do it because it was such kind of a disaster and it's clear she was just wanting to get out of there so and it did and it's and probably it, straight I, I felt like it would cheapen the good deed if i was like hey can i get your number um whoa, whoa. Yeah. i didn't say it like that i said well yeah i mean yeah but I, that's the the sentiment that's how i was worried she would take it you know what i, I think Grant famous it, it's also 2022 hey so like she could have been like why do you need my number to check on this dude? And then that could have turned into something. Oh, then you said he's so drunk he won't give me his phone number. He's not. He's not cognitive. Look, the point is, I think that uh, all-time best hockey player ever, Wayne Gretzky, said it best when he said, "You miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take." But you shouldn't also necessarily take all the shots you could take. I stand with that. That's fair. Look. I feel like you're painting me as the bad guy here. I no, don't think there's a you're, problem with oh, trying. We're just trying to be the bro like, dude, you should have got some. I didn't say, dude, you should have got some. Look, because the way that I view the situation is she you, she seemed like the nice, responsible. Friend. You you follow through. You find out, hey, he got home safe. And then the next day you send a text and say, hey, is he still doing all right? And if, if there's you never hear anything back, that's fine. You never hear anything back. You know, you can follow up on a person, you make sure they're doing okay, and who knows, that might turn into a lifelong friendship. I've had many friendships that have turned out his guardian angel. by goofy, weird one-offs like that. I mean, one of my friends in college was because I saw her just sitting outside the building, and I was going on a walk, and I ended up looping back around, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to try talking to this person. And I talked to her for several hours. Uh, funny thing is, at one point, she invited me to come hang out at her place. And the thing is, I had laundry in the washer that had been there for quite a while. And so I went and took care of that instead. <laughs> you didn't take care of that and then go meet up? No. Damn. Okay, well, I, it, it's yeah. already done, so I, yeah, I, I got no comment This on man that. has his priorities straight. No, but... This is a man who understands priorities. She, she told me like much later on that she thought that was so funny that she invited someone over to hang out her a boy over to hang out her place and he's like nah i gotta go take care of laundry you know what it probably truth <laughs> be told probably 
movies. Probably like it probably set you up to be good friends forever on because she's like, huh, a guy who's got his priorities on just- straight enough. <laughs> Thirsty. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. it was kind of a friendship where it was always kind of almost on the verge of being a relationship, but not really. There were definitely points like I remember one time we went out to eat somewhere and there's very much the question of like, is this a date? And I was poor. I I didn't we were pay all poor for in college, the Lucas. We, I, we know the I, I'm sorry, I didn't. I, I was hey, not hey, thinking Lucas, it was a date. I, like how I the- didn't want to make it a date. I like how that's the opposite end of have you ever been on a date with someone because you were hungry? Mm -hmm. I've actually that's happened to me before. But the golden rule and this works no matter what, no matter what you want to say, no matter what high horse you're sitting on, the universal truth that we all know, if it's a heterosexual duo of one guy or one 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 dude, one lady, whatever, whatever. If the girl thinks it's a date, it's a date. If the girl does not think it's a date, it's not a date. Now, this can be changed retroactively. But <laughs> if she does not think it's a date, it is not a date. I don't know. I think you're kind of taking out the, the guy's agency in the matter. Oh, I think that's the point of the theory. I think we're going to have to test this that's theory. the point of the theory. Because there have been times where, like, you as a dude, you didn't set that precedent. And I feel like a lot of people can test this. It's just like, yeah, you... You went out with this person, you had a great day, and she was like, wow, I'm so happy to have a friend like you. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> or, or like, for example, like I had a situation where I went out with a friend and we had food, we had a good day, and I paid for dinner just because like, you know, even with my, some of my guy friends, like sometimes we take turns like paying for dinner, whatever, whatever. And I thought at that point in time that we were just friends. And then two or three months later, she was like, oh, I thought that was a date. And I was like, huh guess it was a date like that's just that's just what it was and everyone was and it's funny because imme- at, well, at first like when everyone was like hey like where you been what happened i told them they're like oh yeah you were just hanging out with that girl yeah cool the second she said oh i thought that was a date everyone's like nope that was a date that was a date you can hang out with girls and have it not be a date if she thinks it's a date it's a date that's, that's it sorry i don't make up the rules i just uh i don't i just try to explain it, it sometimes. it's like south park i don't make the rules i just think them up and write them down <laughs> fair okay Okay. well gentlemen we've all got a very special question to answer tonight i'm going to make sure that we've got enough time i forgot about this let's go so here so ready for this question the last three brain cells as we've developed this and we've talked about what this podcast is about it really comes back to answering ridiculous questions so the question for this evening is what is your perfect heist? I know for a fact that my perfect heist is nothing like anything you guys thought of, so I do not want to go first. All right, Lucas, it's on you. Does it involve turtles? No. Oh, neither does mine. It involves laser sharks. <laughs> oh, that's better. <laughs> but sh- should I go first, or I'm kind of curious about the laser sharks? No, 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 no. Lucas, you go first. You go okay. First. So there was a few things. The problem is my mindset is less of a traditional heist where it's like, I'm going to steal something of value, like a diamond or money from a vault. Because in nowadays Mm -hmm. world, it's really hard to actually profit off that stuff Mm -hmm. between everything, including like the IRS, scary organization. Uh, so ways to get around what i was thinking is you guys know vanilla extract yes mm-hmm. you know how much more expensive the real stuff is than the synthetically made in the lab well isn't vanilla itself the stem of an orchid that blooms for two or three weeks out of a year I don't know that. I know I that the chemical that's responsible for the primary taste that we associate with vanilla is uh, vanillin, is the name of the chemical. And that's expensive. Yeah. It's it's hard to make. It's mostly made near the e- equator. Like a lot of it comes from Mexico, for example. I'm bringing up Mexico because that's part of my heist. Some of it comes from Canada and... <laughs> I'm not going to explain it here because you got to get through your heist, but you people can look at home can look up how beavers are related to vanilla. Yeah, let's not get into that now. I know what you're people. talking about. I've heard about this. Beavers. But yeah, no, it's better. We're not going to talk about it now because Lou's got to get through his heist. It, but it's it related. relates it's related. too much back to the cocaine bears from last um, 
Last it's, podcast. All right, so how, let's get going. On. Okay, well, okay, I, people, that that totally beavers, derailed me. I too too <laughs> many potential okay. sexual innuendos in the past little bit. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, so back to vanilla. Got a whole mm, story now. Vanilla. Uh, vanilla is a lot more expensive when vanilla. it's natural, but it's a lot easier. Granted, the process is more dangerous, but as long as you have a properly furnished lab, you can make vanilla extract. The primary difference... It's like fake boobs. Between, yep. Uh, the primary difference <laughs> is vanilla naturally does have some health benefits, relatively minor health benefits, but it does have some over just the made in a lab. The other thing is some people think that there is a taste difference. What I would do hmm. is the vanilla like fake extract industry is worth over 500 million and a lot of it comes from huh. mexico so what i'm thinking okay. is you could very easily fake from having a small like farming setup for farming natural vanilla and then have your actual main production be in mm -hmm. labs lab space you could very easily fake that grease some palms and by diluting your vanilla in substantially no one would be able to tell the difference also you could establish as a precedent enough variation in the other stuff besides the actual vanilla that since it's not harming anyone you're not transporting narcotics you're transporting just vanilla the most commonly used flavoring and baking you could easily make well over a hundred million in profits by doing so hmm. and i feel like this is probably something that's already done at least to some extent because it's easy to convince people it's okay because you're not actually hurting anyone it's just some people are like oh my pure vanilla extracts better it's like confirmation bias will take care of almost all of that and so you're not harming anyone but it's a substantial industry there's potential to make a lot of money and it's based out of country mexico where historically it's easier to kind of have those sorts of arrangements as long as everybody's making money through it and I, I don't think it'd be that hard to get it validated through customs after looking at the customs requirements. Interesting. So I really like your heist because I feel like it's pretty realistic and a lot more doable than some other things. So after hearing that whole thing, I believe that that's not a heist. I think that's a scam. It's an important distinction. Mm. A scam? Mm. The, well, the, the perfect heist is they never knew it happened. And so this is something where, the, realistically, this could be happening right now. And I feel like there's enough incentives that I'd be kind of surprised if this isn't happening on some level. Well, I think it's a great thing that most people won't find out about, and it probably is happening. And I agree there. I believe a heist needs an object to be stolen oh i feel okay. like with a heist, well, wait, there's a okay. definitive this end because be... with a scam you can keep it going you know what about right. this i had a second thought so my thought for the heist is you're stealing a lot of money from a lot of people the thing is they don't realize they're being screwed and this is the reason why so i guess it is kind of a scam but whatever <laughs> <laughs> what you do is you create businesses that focus on helping people file taxes. Then you spend millions of dollars lobbying Congress to make taxes very confusing and to prevent taxes from being simplified. So that everyday people need your help, need to use your software, need to ask for your advice. Otherwise, they risk committing a felony without even realizing it. Oh wait, that is a thing. Not actually, That's TurboTax and H and R Block. Right. I, oh my goodness. Yeah, I think that uh, again, scam. Put a scam. Scam. But heist. I, I'm having trouble thinking of how you guys are going to actually have heists that are profitable. So in the day. I guess maybe with cryptocurrency BS, you could I hide had, stuff. I had trouble coming up with what I would see as a perfect heist. And most of this comes down to, I spent a lot of time reading and developing heists for Dungeons and Dragons. 
So I can't think of them mm. like a normal person would. I begin with the score and work my way backwards. And instead, I, like this. I have my perfect pieces to a heist. Such as mm, okay. you always need to have information gathering that requires mm-hmm. uh, technical knowledge. There needs to be some kind of security mm-hmm. system that's either breakable or better yet, impenetrable that mm-hmm. you need Pregnable. to find a You need to find a way around. Uh, There needs to be a debonair suave aspect, maybe going to a party and schmoozing where you either sleight of hand steal a key or uh, you pull a honeypot where you seduce someone and then steal a necessary piece of information. Um, I believe a heist needs an acrobatic component. Doesn't necessarily need to be acrobatics in terms of flipping and whatnot. But scaling a building or Tom Cruise descending in Mission Impossible into the bank vault, you need an aspect like that. There needs to be an uncomfortable physical aspect Um, and then a chase of some kind, Uh, a working against time. So I, I think of this in terms of pieces, but not necessarily in terms of a full heist. I probably ran like seven of these sort of D&D adventures and they're all very loose because I wait for players to think of what they are, uh, the pieces or how they're going to solve these problems. It's all movie inspired anyway. All the stuff you mentioned, though, that's just an, a dinner party. Right. Gathering it's, intel, it dancing, should, physical challenge there. Correct. It should uh, be. There should be a big dinner party aspect. In fact, I think one of the lamest heists you can watch is the original Ocean's Eleven. It's probably the most realistic heist, and it's the lamest. I want Oceans. I want the remake Oceans Eleven with Brad Pitt, George Clooney. I want Logan Lucky, or my favorite goofy heist of all time, The Maiden Heist, a movie of which I assume neither of you has even heard of. I've heard of Maidens. I've played Elden Ring. It's not that. The Maiden Heist, which I'll make the quick plug, is a movie that uh, was made at the tail end of the 2000s, so before 2010. It has Christopher Walken. Oh, who's the voice of God? Morgan Freeman. Um, and a whole <laughs> bunch. Of, he is. And a bunch of other great actors. Uh, William H. Macy, I believe, is in it. And Christopher Walken is an elderly security guard at a museum who has a favorite piece that is of a maiden that he looks at all the time. He guards the piece and he finds out that the museum is trading the piece away. So his goal is to steal the piece. It's a really fun movie. It's a, it's a heist gone wrong in the best way possible. And it's good for Christopher Walken and Morgan Freeman in it. So in terms of a heist that is not that technical, that goes incorrect, I think there's a... But it has all those pieces. Gathering the intel, finding the right... A lot of fun. You have to put together a team. I think that's an important part. Oh, put no. together yes. a team. Now I'm just I think that's thinking... the most fun part about a heist is putting the team together. Right, right. Uh, heist needs that... Really, the two core components. Well, I uh, listed a whole bunch of fun stuff. The two core components are what's your score and what's the perfect team you need to put it together. Why do you need Bernie Mac mm-hmm. to go count cards for you? Okay, so two things. Actually... You know what? Let's go with three. Three things. All right. So first thing, that just makes me think of the Rick and Morty episode on heist shows, that the whole point of it is just saying heist heist movies are stupid. Spoiler? I I don't think that's a spoiler. Uh, But it is is an entertaining um, movie, just kind of making fun of the tropes, or not movie, show. Episode, yeah. Two, I forgot in what two was. So I'm going to worry about that later and move on to three. I feel like that's a meme. Don't think it was a meme. Make profit. All right, go on to three. Oh, 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 okay. All right, I see ya. And then the third thing I just wanted to say to you, Jeremiah, that I'm impressed. I set out to scam all these people with vanilla, but you scammed all of us without an actual answer. Right, I... As I thought about it, it's so split up. I It's so situational. Kind of like how you were talking about, too. It's so hard to steal art or diamond or whatever that you would heist bank bank robbery. Um, there is a great series. I think it's done by GQ where they interview GQ. former criminals and XYZ. 
And I just remember mm -hmm. them interviewing a former criminal who, when they are an art thief, they said, well, how do you determine what you want? They say, well, some will be connected with a private investor, however you want to put it. Somebody who's got a lot of money who says, hey, I will pay you 400 million for this piece or a couple hundred million. And you go do the heist and that piece is never going to see the light of day again. It's going to be in a private collection somewhere. That's interesting. There are ways to get around that through taxes and all those things. Yeah. So there are still art thefts and there are still, it's not going to be the Mona Lisa, which fun fact, the Mona mm -hmm. Lisa is only so famous because it was stolen. It was part of a heist. And when it was returned, it became the most popular piece. But that's uh, kind of like how mm. um, It's a Wonderful Life became such a popular movie. There's no way, because I was thinking of the same thing. Oh, because it they forgot to renew the copyright, and so stations were able to play it without having to pay royalties. Well, and so they started playing it all the time. It wasn't and just... it became a classic. It wasn't just that. The movie itself, It's a Wonderful Life, was not a popular movie in its time. Mm -hmm. And when television became a thing and you would syndicate movies or whatever else, the syndication fees, even when it started, was so low that everybody could afford it very cheaply. So a whole generation grew up of watching this movie thinking it was a classic when really it was just so unnoteworthy that it was cheap. Mm. And now it is an important part of our culture. I mean, it's a good movie. I, I don't know. I would say it's my favorite movie anymore, but there was a period of time where it was my favorite movie. Okay. Okay. But we got the big grand right. finale now. I I need my laser sharks. This is fundamental Here to my go. mental health. So I wasn't trying to plan the perfect heist. I was trying to plan the ultimate heist. Ooh. So there are so many things that you could add to this to make it more complicated and fun. But here are the bare bones, right? First, you get into real estate. Not the hardest thing to do. It's one of those things where it's it's tough to learn. But once you're in there, you're in there. It's just hard to get really good to the point where you're selling like million dollar real estate, whatever, whatever. But that's that, that's how you start. You get into real estate, blah, 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 blah. Now, you have to find the right location. I think similar to what we were talking about before, the important thing about, find, about a heist is you have to find the right thing to heist. If it's too popular, you're on everybody's radar and it's just ridiculous difficulty. It has to be popular enough that, you know, it everyone recognizes that it's high value, but not so popular enough that like, oh, if it went missing or whatever, they do search parties and international, whatever, whatever. And it, it would like it has to be something that wouldn't be in the news for like more than like a week or two or whatever. Right. So here's what I would do. I would find a really good remote island. And what I would do is I'd find a way to sell that island to a very rich oligarch person. Right. This is why you need the team. You need to have like your, your grifter, your seller, your real estate person. Right. So I sell the I sell this island. Well, after investing enough money in it that like, you know, you have like your moat, you have like your, you have your shark pit, everything, right? The classic supervillain island. They had like an episode similar to this on, um, on a really great show called Inside Job. But you're selling this really lavish, amazing real estate on a private island, right? You got sharks with lasers, everything, right? So here's what you do. All the things that make this island super cool um, and super villainy and everything, they serve a dual function. And one of the dual functions was that is that the laser attached to the shark that allows the sharks to shoot lasers, right? I'm thinking it'd be like some type of remote control thing, like a video game. Someone's trying to infiltrate your island and you just hop on the console and you just do pew pew and it just remotely shoots lasers to wherever the sharks are swimming, whatever. But one of the receivers on the on the shark's laser apparatus is also connected to the network. You see, you're on a private island. So unless you have like a satellite phone or something, you're not really going to get reception, right? So in this private island that you've invested in to be all amazing and everything, you've added your own network, right? With its own VPN. Then you sell this island with the laser sharks, with the, I don't know, fire-breathing crocodiles, whatever, sell it to the rich oligarchs. And you make it so great that he has to tell all his friends. He has to invite everybody else to flex on this island, right? So you you, you kind of whisper in his ear a little bit. He's throwing all these obscene, amazing parties with all these lavish, rich people, some of them getting up to no good, right? And the receiver in the sharks, as well as other things, what it does is all the data that gets transmitted with the worldwide internet, that information gets copied and stored somewhere offshore that they'll never know about, never be able to trace. 
you're the IT guy who set everything up. They don't need an IT guy. And if they do have an IT guy, you have so many firewalls and bricks and stuff that there's no point. It's like, hey, it works. You don't need anything else. And then when you ask them, like, oh, it looks like if someone was smart enough that they hired somebody who was smart enough to be like, oh, where's all this data going? You just be like, oh, no, it goes to like a, you know, a private server that gets deleted every 10 minutes just so that, you know, security, no one can hack through your fingerprint, whatever, whatever, whatever. So you run this thing for a solid couple of years. So you, in, in this couple of years, you are now cataloging a, a long list of blackmail material based off of the, the texts and the emails and everything that's being transmitted over data, right? Because, you, you, of course, you got the rich oligarch, and they always, they always know people who are doing things or they're doing things themselves, right? So you don't reveal, you don't reveal this stuff for a solid 10, 15 years because they, they, they bought your island, dude. Like, that's, that's real estate. That's money in your pocket, right? After a certain amount of time, you get into a you get into contact with like the FBI or something, and you're like, "Hey, I got this blackmail that you would just love to have, right?" And maybe you give you whisper in that in their ear a little. You're just like, "Hey, um, by the way, guess my IT guy fucked up. He already got assassinated, but uh, I got this list of blackmail." And then you play both sides for a ransom. And eventually the person is like, yeah, fuck this. All of my data is getting leaked as long as I'm here. So eventually they leave. And once you've made all this money, you know, you can put it towards, you know, philanthropies and hedge funds. You do enough legit, legitimate business with it that, like, no one can really think you're sketchy unless they try to look at where the money came from. Maybe you have a little few sketchy things here and there. It's really easy to avoid taxes. Everyone should do it. Well, not avoid taxes, but <laughs> legally pay less taxes than you should. Everyone should pay their taxes, but everyone should also find the ways to pay less taxes than they should. And everyone should just commit felonies. Turn that it's okay. Right. Legal and loopholes aren't end, felonies. Know, just, Everyone needs to be legal like loopholes are not felonies. Yoshi commits tax fraud, so so should you. We need to talk about that later. Okay, but you know, end of the heist, you just rent out the island as like an Airbnb, which is something that people actually currently do. They rent out private islands as some type of Airbnb type stuff. So now you're making even more money. And the heist is you got away with the blackmail. Okay, okay. You're, but you're, here, you're getting here's material, an important question. Would you still be doing the the wireless recordings or however you're doing it when it's an Airbnb? Because I think that would be low no. return. And since that is illegal, that could be a way that once you're playing this game of cat and mouse, that the feds would bust you That's how and they get hold you. leverage over you yeah. to get the rest of the stuff. Without having yeah. to, I think once you turn it into like an Airbnb or something where you you're using another entity and you have to play by different rules internationally and stuff, that's when you have to go straight clean. And by that point, if you're turning it into an Airbnb, you know people don't feel safe with laser shooting sharks in their homes. Like you'd have to, oh, have to repurpose. I think that's stuff. a feature. That's that's a draw. Hey, come check out this super villain layer. It's still got the sharks with the lasers. You know the upkeep on them can't be that crazy. Yeah. So. It'd be a, you'd, I definitely have to redo things. And also, like, by the time the FBI knows, you'd have to definitely dismantle a few things so they couldn't just infiltrate your island and try to copy the whatever, whatever. It's like, no, by the time you get them involved, you'd have to have everything relatively shut down. So it's like, all right, here's a thing that you can't access, that you can't repeat, that you can't try to heist your way into. It would be the CIA, not the FBI, right? Because they, Probably would be the they're CIA, international yeah. and FBI is domestic. Yeah. I mean, be the CIA. they don't have reach anyway, depending on where this private island is. Just saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we're the United States. I was thinking States. It's, I mean, Southeast Asia. To some extent, we kind of have reach everywhere, except like China and Russia. Oh, look at how long it took to get that one guy. Who was the... Oh, why am I blanking on this right now? Are you now? talking about Osama bin Laden? No, we got him. You're talking about the guy from the middle in the who was in the Middle East? Nope, not the Middle East. He was the Swiss guy who uh who was the whistleblower who did the oh my gosh, I can't think of his name. He lived in the Equ whistleblower on He lived in the Ecuadorian embassy for the like ten years. Is it like oh. Snowden? Not Snowden. No. I, I don't know why he did, I just heard his name. Man, why am I having so much trouble with this? No, he he did have the website where he was putting they were putting up all sorts of like back end deals and whatnot. I am I am blanking hard on what the website is even called. Barack Obama. Blankety blank blank. Blankety blank 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 blank. Damn. That was a joke, but blank blank. That's right, Lucas. 
Look, I think I'm just a thirsty little hamster. I regret saying that immediately. <laughs> pig boy hamster named Angel. I, I well, preferred hamster. Angelic pig boy. pig boy ham. So I think people hamster, go- ham, pig, the joke's elevating. It's it's got wings. So look, I think we did an okay job with the heists, but uh anybody listening to this, they need to send in their perfect heist. Because I think we, this is something we need to return to. Mm. I'm sure there's somebody out there who's mm-hmm. going to better hi- out heist us. They're going to create a heist on how they manage to usurp each of our heists. That would and do be great. something I better. Would love that. Someone find a way to steal the presidency without replacing the real president with the robot. I mean, isn't that just Trump though? He just came I in. I honestly out. think he had a pretty. I would say left field, but I think it, it was a pretty right easy field. time. Um. And he did, I, no I one liked think him. He had a hard time stealing it, but he he took the election. Still, I mean, I think if you recent, take a but. good look at the socio political climate when he was elected, you would have not been surprised that any non politician had a solid chance of becoming president. Yeah, I just think if non career politician, I would say if it was almost any Democrat but Hillary Clinton, I think the Democrats would have won. <laughs> but this is kind of, we we've gotten a bit political. Yeah, screw that. Yeah, long, long a ways ago, political. Weirdly topical, though, as wasn't it Trump who was like, hey, learn how to loophole the legal system, too. Yep. Or tax system. Yep. It's a very specific tax system. I don't know if he said legal system. Very specific. Think like a rich loophole person. Loophole the tax system, not the legal system. Is that, that's like, that reminds me of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. There's a really Almost, famous yeah. speech he gave where he said, break the rules, be a rule breaker. Don't break the law, but break the rules. <laughs> <laughs> he, he had the foresight to think yeah. about it in that moment to be like, wait a second, I'm not saying break the law, mm-hmm. but uh, break the rules. Yeah, I think the majority, the vast majority of the time, the rules should be followed. I think there is a very, very extremely minute set of situations where it's like, Find a loophole in the legal system because you found yourself in a very cinematically compromising position where it is against you for no concrete good reason. But that's a whole different other conversation. Well, keyword in there was cinematic. If you listen to Captain Barbosa, aren't taxes just more of guidelines than actual rules? Presumably, unless you're rich, the I- it's not worth the IRS's time to come after you. But the problem is, if you are ever rich, which ideally you want to become rich, then you have to deal with the fact that you weren't paying taxes. Oh, you're going to get audited by the IRS if you're rich. Like, even if everything mm-hmm. checks out. It depends on but what level you hit. you also hit. pay people in the IRS to, like, audit you without fucking up your shit so you can fix your... Sorry. So that you can fix your stuff before um, any serious consequences befall you. I feel like that's getting dangerously close to bribing a federal agent. I mean, a lot of different companies do it, but there comes a point where it's not. You're not bribing if you're... If you have a person who's very experienced and knowledgeable about all these laws and codes and stuff, and you now hire that person as an individual entity to help you like a TurboTax or H&R Block so that you can do things in a way that is legal so that you are still paying your taxes even though you might be paying less taxes because you're you're manipulating different statutes and loopholes and stuff. Even if the IRS comes at you to audit you, you can still say, hey, give me some time to fix things, right? And that is something that our IRS does do where it's like, let's say you file your taxes this year and then you file your taxes next year. And then two years from now, they're like, hey, the taxes you filed two, three, four years ago, there is a discrepancy here. You either have this much time to fix it or then we're going to do ridiculous action. And a lot of those times it's like, all right, just get yourself a really good lawyer and a really good person who knows a way around that. And there are ways for that to be resolved without, you know, you know, this reminds me, I recently found out that over 200, 285,000 corporations and large businesses have a tax address in Delaware. It's it mm-hmm. a whole bunch of corporations share the same physical building address as a corporate tax haven or tax loophole. Well, yeah, you can buy mm-hmm. there's addresses for probably almost any state. I don't know why you can this. Buy. I don't know why this one specifically. There must be something with the local mun- municipality or Delaware in general that makes this one special. Yeah. But 
All mm-hmm. the corporations do it. Coca-Cola, McDonald's, uh, Walmart. Does Delaware have low state taxes? And you'd have to look up why this specific address, but I believe it's to yeah. a corporate firm, a corporate tax firm. Yeah, because there are a bunch, like, you know, Tennessee doesn't have any income tax, but, you know, you end up making up some of that tax money elsewhere. And, you know, taxes, you, there's a whole different, there's a whole litany and array, a plethora, I want to say, of uh, charts that show which states are better for which taxes and all those things so you can coordinate your efforts based off of what your what your goal is and how you want to do your taxes right choose your taxes right and some states make it so you can't pump your own gas hey jersey don't know why that's a thing but hey it creates jobs right well guys i think we've done what we set out to do tonight we've talked a lot about eels indeed yeah, mm-hmm. we went from ill genitalia to some other stuff. Just skip to the heist. a few. To, yeah, we talked about the heist. Mm-hmm. Lucas's stories with his. We new talked friend. about gay things. So that's man, happy day. I feel like that word is just thrown around so much. It's like, man, that's gay or that's gay. It's like, we need to find a better word. Because now you have people actually saying, like, oh, if a guy eats popcorn on a movie date, he's gay. And it's like, wait, what? You can't even have popcorn on movie dates now? What? Oh. Is it because you get Heck. stuff stuck in your teeth? I I heard a I heard a story. This this was a story that came off of um Instagram or Twitter, but it was a young lady who was like, oh, I don't know about the the rest of you, but as far as I'm concerned, if a guy takes you on a dinner date and he orders dessert, uh, he's not a real man or he's gay. And it's like, man, we can't, look, we can't I'll take chocolate is like, gay. Apparently, look, I will take. I call me gay, but. I take bubble baths. Will do. I, I have dessert in the it said bubble baths. I don't care. Like that's part of enjoying yeah. my life. Amen. Is, yes, I did sir. a Z snap. Nobody. This is a very that, arbitrary but... activity that has nothing to do with your sexuality. Right. Like we need to find a better word. Okay, but the problem is that's going to run into the same problem that every controversial word runs into, where if you come up with a new word for it. That's just going to become the replacement you know, for saying, oh, that's so gay. It's interesting. It's just like, oh, that's so special. Oh, that's so rainbow. I'm a little bit outside of the demographic that you both are. I'm a little older. And I remember growing up where probably fifth, sixth grade up through high school, calling something gay was insulting or effeminate, however you want to put it. And I remember probably 2009, 2010, where that was addressed culturally and just watching that term be scaled back. Even working with kids the last seven years um, and specifically middle schoolers, because wherever you're at, I think we can all agree middle schoolers are the worst. Mm. They really no qualifiers, just the everything. The, mm-hmm. uh, but using gay in a derogatory way has reduced. I'm sure it's still done. I don't know what the current yeah. modern term to use is. Um, you know, I'm not. Well, when they anymore. say that's so gay nowadays, they're just saying that's stupid or dumb. Not really. Which is Isn't that the derogatory sense? Which still dero- to me that's still derogatory because I did the yes. same thing growing up. But watching the amount that it's used be pulled back. Mm-hmm. I mean, now when when I hear that's so gay, the first thing I think of is like, oh, did Little Nas X drop another dope song? I I don't judge me for that. That's just what I do. I'm I'm sorry, but that that comment was pretty gay. <laughs> yeah, because it involves little Nas X <laughs> dropping a dope song, but that's what I think of if somebody were to be like, "Man, that's so gay." I'd think like, like that's that's my. You don't think of something that's offensive. You think of something that pertains to something definition based. I right. I think we should keep the sentiment, uh, but just replace "gay" with "homoerotic." Like, ugh, that's so homoerotic, bro. I do like homoerotic things. Go watch The Lighthouse with Robert Pattinson and Willem have, Dafoe. It's great. You, hmm. I don't think you it's not have, for most people, Jeremiah. Let me just tell you that right now. It's weird. I've, I've heard hmm. about how that's homoerotic. Have you? Yeah, I, I, heard I can't movie. remember if you have, Jeremiah, but I think Sammy has um, Death Note, the anime. Okay, I've what about Death Note, the really... anime? There's now. one scene because the whole show is about a cat and mouse game between Light, who's using this notebook that whenever he writes someone's name in, uh, it kills them. 
and he can write how they die and when. Um, and a super smart detective that's just known as L it, who's haunting him. It's a really great show. At least the first half, the show's broken up into two parts and the first section of the show is very good. I agree. For first part of the show is very good. And then the second half is not as good. Sentence. When you watch it, you'll understand why. But around, actually around about half point time, there's one scene between light and L that's weirdly homoerotic. It's like a thing that's discussed about in discussion boards is hmm. why was because most of the evidence supporting the idea that what if they were kind of into each other romantically or sexually pretty much is that scene. Huh. There was homoerotic washing of feet. I think it was supposed to be an allegory to religious stuff, but it just there was some sexual tension there, and it was weird. Because the characters are like, besides that, they're very clearly both asexual. Yeah, they really are. Light def or not light L definitely. He is definitely he is like uh, I can see that kind of like Sherlock Holmes. Light has to be asexual. If you had a chick like that into you as much as in that show, there's no man who's straight that would behave the way he did. To tie this up, to tie this up, there are very uh, circularly to bring the circle full circle. Man knew his priorities. Man knew his priority. And his priority was to kill a whole bunch of people who he thought should be on the earth and then get away with it. Like a heist. That's the perfect heist. Sadly. Death Note's the perfect heist. Oh We've tied goodness. everything together. Yes. The only thing that this conclusion is missing is we just need to tie in eels and genitalia. And the fact that eels don't well, have the sex. look like. In oh. Light Yagami. There you go. Is a human ill. <laughs> he clearly I, I you has no testicles. When you try to go for that one. And that's why he was as good as what he was going to do. Did you say I was. shot myself in the heel? Yes, I said he shot, he shot himself in the heel uh, trying to tie that all together. Yeah. Okay, I think that's a sign-off moment. We tied it all together. And uh, when when we finally have an answer to why eels and how they reproduce... We'll have to circle back to this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Circle back. I feel like I should say something closing statement. I All mean, right, angel pig boy, take us away. No, no. Okay, so I'm going to try and do this with the mic. I'm not sure how well it'll work, but... It was a, it was a flying pig flying by the mic and then flying off into the sunset. The worst part was the hand puppet part. I'm gonna. I did do a bird hand, hand puppet. puppet. Okay. I should have made it fat because it was like a pig. It should have had trouble getting me, off the ground. Am, it should have been like. I'm seriously, <laughs> seriously considering going vegan because of yes. And Sammy went vegan. I don't know. You're kind of hamming up your reaction there, Sammy. That's a wrap. Uh, Bacon wrap. Uh,